Only a few hundred passengers survived the sinking, and only a handful of those are still alive to see the pictures of the ship as it is now. One of them is Eva Hart. This was Eva with her parents just three weeks before they boarded the Titanic. They were on their way to a new home in Winnipeg. They never made it. But Eva survived and still carries vivid memories of that night. We reached Eva Hart at her home in Chadwell Heath near London. Ms. Hart, what was your reaction? What went through your mind when you found out that the Titanic had been found? Oh, well, of course, my immediate reaction was that I, I, just as it always has been, and I hope they would never raise the Titanic. Because to me, just as a very ordinary individual, it is my father's grave, and I would rather it were left untouched. But today's wonderful news of this tremendously scientific effort makes me realize that if that sort of skill can possibly in future do marvelous things for uh, these matters, well then of course I accept that it probably will be done. Your memories of that night must be very clear. They are indeed. Can yes. you tell us something about what happened? Well, you know quite well what happened. The ship struck an iceberg and I, like all seven-year-old children, of course, was in bed and asleep. But my mother wakened me and, and my father took me, went with my mother, and took me and placed me in a lifeboat and my mother and made no attempt to get in himself. But I really do owe the good fortune of my living to the fact that my mother had a tremendous premonition of disaster from the first time that she knew she was going in the Titanic. Really? And uh, she said that uh, to say that a ship was unsinkable, which is what the whole world was saying, to say that was flying in the face of God. And she begged of my father not to go. But when we finally went, she said, well, I shall not go to bed at night in that ship. I shall sit up at night and I shall sleep in the daytime. And that's exactly what she did. That's and remarkable. so because she was wide awake, we got on deck in plenty of time to get into one of the all too few lifeboats. So I feel I owe my life to that premonition. But your father did not get in the lifeboat. Why was that? Why? Mm -hmm. Well, you know the rule of the sea, don't you? Women and children first. No man is going to take the place of a woman or child. And by the time the women and children were in that lifeboat, it was full? Absolutely. What happened then? Well, we rowed away from the ship as fast as we possibly could, of course. And then it was discovered that the boat that I was in was very much overcrowded. And so the boats were all called together and people were put one in another boat and two in another boat if there was room. And in, the, in that transshipment, I got separated from my mother, which was quite terrifying. You were separated from your mother? I met her the next day, of course, aboard the Carpathia. She thought that I'd been dropped in the sea when I was put over the side of the boat. And I was too terrified to know what had happened. I didn't even think about it. All I knew was that she wasn't there, which was quite terrifying. What did you see as you rowed away from the ship? Did well, you all I could see was the sinking ship. Mm -hmm. It was a terribly dark night starlit but no moonlight and this tremendous ship which didn't sink for over two hours horrible sight dreadful sight did you see the iceberg yes i did it was the other side of the ship from where we were but as we rowed away um, and we looked back at the ship we could see the iceberg so to speak behind it that's the only way i can describe it it was very large were you old enough to know at the time what was happening to your father? Oh, yes, of course. I was devoted to my father. I knew quite well I'd never see him again. Would you like to know now who was at fault for the disaster? Would you like to know anything more about what happened, or does it matter anymore? It doesn't matter anymore. I know what the fault was. The fault was that that ship was allowed to go to sea with too few lifeboats. And therefore, those 1,513 people who died that night need not have died. And it took a disaster like that to make the Board of Trade alter their regulations, which now says, of course, that you cannot go to sea without you taking enough lifeboats for everyone. But it took a disaster like that to bring that into being.
because nothing is unsinkable. Absolutely. Miss Hart, thanks very much. Thank you very much.